Welcome to the Writer's Block Podcast, a podcast for Christian women writers who want to love God, love words, and love their readers. We know that sharing your words with the world takes courage. You desire to see your work make an eternal impact, but it's not always easy to hit publish. Writing often fills us with self-doubt and fear, and we wonder, who am I to write about this? If you want to build a writing platform without losing heart, you're in the right place. Welcome to The Writer's Block, a community of writers who gather weekly to grow in the art and heart of writing. I'm Kara Ray, your host, and you're listening to The Writer's Block Podcast. Yay! Well, welcome, everyone. So glad to be here with you and um, so thankful for my friend Space, who's joining us today and talking about like the whole world. And we haven't really touched on this very much in the writer's block. So I'm really excited for this opportunity because I love talking about it, um, about this intersection of writing and entrepreneurship. And Space has a great story and she's she is an entrepreneur. I think maybe kind of a reluctant one, right? <laughs> or a surprise one. Like, I don't know that that's what she's envisioned God doing in her life, but um, that's what she's she's doing. So I'm going to um, ask, take, well, take it over to you, Space, and let you give us a little bit of background about your, your business. Um, so in 2007, I accidentally started a business um, making soap because we were homeschooling and um, then it was actually the first year that I had um, like finances to work with because we joined a charter school and, and we lived in California at the time and the way that they did it was basically um, a teacher would um, like I would meet with a certified teacher I would make sure I was covering everything um, weekly like or like monthly she would check in and make sure all the subjects were getting covered At the end of the year she would test my kids make sure that the I was legitimately teaching them stuff but also they would give us funding for different art supplies and stuff and we were pretty poor at the time so it was like my first year getting really excited because I had like the funds to be able to buy art supplies to be able to do cool things with my kids and so I kind of went crazy and we had the most fun homeschooling year of our lives and one of the things that we did that year was we studied how the colonists made things and then we made them ourselves. And one of the things that we made was soap. And um, we also made salve that year. We studied herbal medicine and we made salve. And both of those things became the birth of space cadet soaps. And um, and it it's funny, like Kara was saying, like I was kind of a reluctant accidental entrepreneur um, because I have never felt like a very good manager of anything. Um, like I'm pretty ADD and um, and have a really hard time, like even just keeping my house orderly or my schedule orderly. Um, and so I've learned a lot in uh, 16 and a half years or 16 years. It was the end of 2007 of um, by running this business, but it has not come natural um, for me to be in charge of something um, like that. So anyways, but I've also learned a lot about writing. Um, and publishing through the experiences that I've had of running and adapting to um, being an entrepreneur or a business owner. So yeah, I I want to get to that. So um, because it's it's an interesting mix of you know entrepreneurship and writing, but um, God's given you both of those things to steward. And even though you say you're not a very good manager, obviously you are because. <laughs> You've been doing this for a long time and God has increased your boundaries. So what what do you feel like are the like the your greatest strengths and weaknesses when it comes to your business and running a business? Uh, my uh, my greatest weakness um, has been my ADD, but also one of my greatest strengths. But I would say that my greatest strength is just that I really value people. Um, and so, um, so I'm very personable and so people are drawn to my product because of my, my personality, um, and my care for them and, um, and that I see people, I think, um, I asked God at one point to help me see his image in everybody that I met. And, um, and I think he's done a really sweet job of honoring that prayer of just helping me to like, to, um, to see people and to 
to appreciate them as image bearers of God who um, who deserve to be cherished. So, and wow. I think that comes out in the way that I deal business wise. So. Well, I I mean, what greater thing is that? Like, I think that's that's so great, and maybe one of the reasons God has really blessed you. And I mean, I think that's a lesson to 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 adapt in our writing life is because to think of the people, the actual people that are reading your word words and connecting with them. So what what do you think? Like how how does this writing life intersect with your your business life and how have you managed to figure that out? Because I think that's really hard. I I'm doing the same thing and not making soap, but managing online spaces. I have an, a full-time job as well. And so I find yeah. it really hard. Like I, I don't, I'm still trying to figure out that, that balance of work and writing and leisure and, you know, work doing the things I have to do and the things I want to do. So do you, yeah. how do you manage that? Um, well, I think you and I are both blessed by the seasons of life that we're in, where we don't have little kids at home. Um, and I think that one of the things that I've had to learn along the way is um, to say no, uh, to be okay with saying no, and to kind of just look to the Lord to set my schedule and um, to learn how to how to um, to to let him lead me in the things that he wants me to be doing instead of feeling like I have to jump at every opportunity that I have. And, um, and I think just understanding what we're called to versus what sounds good. Like, um, like I, I'm not sure I've never like taken an official Enneagram test or whatever, but I'm either a four or a seven. And I'm like very much of both of them, right? Like very much like the romantic daydreamer, like a uh, ponderer, deep muser, and also very much like, um, oh, that sounds like fun. Let's do it. And so I remember in my twenties, especially just realizing like, you can't go to two parties at the same time. Like it doesn't work like that. Like that's not even possible. <laughs> and so I think I've had to learn along the way, like, you can't do everything. You can't be all things. And um, and so, like, learning to accommodate my own inabilities. Um, like I said, like, my ADD is, uh, is my greatest weakness. And part of it is, like, the benefit that that's been to me is to slow me down and to teach me um, what to say yes to instead of putting one more thing to juggle in my brain because my brain doesn't handle that very well. Um, and so if I try to take on too much, then I just make myself crazy. Um, and so learning how to like to let go of the things that are making it making it so that I'm incapable of of um, doing what the Lord has wants me to do instead of just saying yes to all the things that sound appealing to me. Yeah. Does that yeah, answer but, your question? Well, okay. yes. And I think there's so much wisdom in that because yes, we do need to learn how to say no, but how do you learn to say yes? Because I think sometimes the flip of that is like, like I said earlier, the things that you have to do and the things that you want to do. And that's, I think, sometimes a harder thing for me, at least, because it's like, I want to spend more time writing. Um I'm not self-employed. So I think that's pr probably a little different because when you're self-employed, you're you, you it's all up to you, right? And so um do you feel like like your work gives you more freedom to to write or is it or is it just kind of that they work together in some some way in which they they kind of shake hands for you? Um I think that um, my flexibility in my schedule is a huge blessing um, as far as that goes. Um, and that there have been a lot of ways that my soap business has empowered my writing life. Um, but I don't think that it changes the dynamic that much. I think as you were asking that, like as you were talking about um, about what, how do you, how do you know what to say yes to? the thought that came to my mind was that faithfulness needs to be a really high priority. That um, when I start to fail is when I let all of the things cripple me with with 
like I just kind of go into like not just writer's block but like life block where I'm just like I just want to like run away and do things to distract myself from how overwhelmed I feel and I think um what the Lord usually reminds me in that moment is um that faithfulness is is what he's after in me that he just wants me to like pursue him and do what he has for me to do and to not hide and put my head in the sand. And and right now I'm kind of preaching to myself too, because I'm in a season where I feel like that. And really it's because I just finished this manuscript and now I have to write book a book proposal and start to um, do that whole thing. And it feels almost like I just climbed this massive mountain for the last like seven and a half years. And now I'm standing at the base of another one that um, that looks just as big and looming and overwhelming. And so I just kind of want to like put my head in the sand and pretend um, like I'm all done. And yeah. but the Lord just keeps reminding me, like, no, I, I haven't called you to the end result. I've called you to faithfulness and moment by moment trekking with Jesus. So oh, that's that's always that's so good. Faith uh, space. I just I love that because it is often a very simple answer, right? About being faithful. Simple, not necessarily easy, but simple. So when you think about like, so you've been in business, did you say 16 years? Yeah. 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 What, the only thing I've longer is, is uh, been a Christian, been a wife and been a mother. I think, I think that's yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah. you've been doing this a long time. So, so how, how do you feel like your business has changed you and what has God taught you over the last 16 years, if you can sum it up. Um, faithfulness. Um, and uh, just to trust him like that. I think one of the things is that um, like that we are created to walk with God and do the thing that he calls us to do. And he's not calling us to, um, to, to do um, like to figure out the end result, to produce the thing. Like he wants to produce um, whatever he's like Ephesians, right? So it says like, we're not saved by works so that no one can boast, but that God has created these good works for us to walk in. Um, that um, basically that, that it's his doing through us and that it's not us needing to, um, to figure it all out and to have everything. Like, I think I'm not wording this very well. I'm sorry, you guys. But um, but I, I think that if I was in it to start a business, if I was in it to make money and have this successful, thriving thing, um, then it wouldn't be what it is because my eyes would have been on the wrong goal. And instead it was like, okay, this is what the Lord's given me to do this next step. And maybe there are people that are wired differently than me that, that they're like, you know, their vision is maybe they're more um far sighted or whatever not far sighted but the far side of where you see you know like they're they're looking further down the road looking and that in the is, distance yeah yeah and that that's their north star but for me it really needed to be moment by moment faithfulness living with an open hand knowing that at any given moment he might ask me to stop and that um there'd be a lot of disappointed people that are dirty and stinky and wish i was still making soap but um, but that it's not that it's never been about the thing that I was producing, but about walking with the Lord in the thing that he created me to do. So, yeah, I love that. Um, so when you when you think about it, there there are quite a few people who really talk about how. And, and I think that I think there's a really good biblical case for it is that God has kind of he called he told Adam and Eve to fill the earth and subdue it and that mm -hmm. a lot of that is about um our creativity and the energies that we put forth into our creative endeavors whether it's making soap or writing words or coaching clients on calls or or writing books or whatever that is like that is part of like God's created creative order for us is to fill the earth and subdue it. And so do you think of that? Do you ever think of that as like God calls us to be entrepreneurial in in the work that we do, whether it's like a physical product, like what you're doing or um, 
maybe a word product like the rest of us? Do you think we're all entrepreneurs? Um, I mean, I think that um, in a way, yeah, I don't, I, I think that we're in a, in an even more unique, like I've never thought about it in the way that you were just communicating it, Kara. But what I have thought about is that as writers, we're leaving a legacy of words and that we get to shape generations to come. And so it's not even like in, in a sense, I'm filling the earth right now with something that's very temporal. People use the bar of soap, it's gone in a month or six months or whatever. Um, depending on how often they bathe and whether they're using his hand soap and you know all these <laughs> different like whether or not they leave it in a puddle of water um but uh, but what we have the opportunity as writers to do is to leave something that's far more lasting where we get to disciple generations then um depending on you know how obviously how well we, we write it or how what God does with our writing um, is how far reaching it's going to be. But you look at somebody like Charles Spurgeon and um, his words are still shaping probably every generation from now until Christ's return. Um, and so uh, it's, it's a beautiful gift that we've been given in such a sacred honor um, to get to write for him. And it seems to me to be so much more precious and important um, and again, I, I think, um, going back to the like entrepreneurial, it's funny cause it's like, um, like actually in part of what I was going to share with you guys on uh, Thursday is that I really um, have never felt like a business owner or an entrepreneur. So that word, even just like rolling it around on my tongue, it feels so funny to me. And I know that that's what everybody else would define what I do as, um, but I, I feel like I'm just a an artist that makes money at what I make. And, um, and I'm fortunate because people like my product and they give me money for it and I get to make friends over soap. And it's beautiful. Well, and uh, I think though you're leaving a lasting impression, even though your product may, may disintegrate over a course of weeks or months, but you are like, I think that that is part of your legacy too, is that you're leaving, a, a, you're engaging with people in a personal way that leaves a legacy. You're absolutely right, Kara. And I feel so often like my soap business is like a front for my missionary work. Like I'm like, <laughs> I, I seriously, I'm like, I am um, like constantly. So um, like I, I sell at craft fairs and music festivals. That's one of the avenues that I sell soap at. And um, I love when my husband comes with me because we make the perfect like tag team because one of us can be doing the business side of things while one of us is talking to somebody about Jesus. And it's like all day long, we get to like pay attention to like which one of us is now in a deep conversation about the Lord. Okay, so now it's my turn. I have to be the person that's like paying attention to like people that are trying to hand me money and take my soap. But, um, but even when it's just me that's like I kind of feel like a cruddy business keeper because there's people like backed up behind these people that are trying to like sniff over their shoulders because I'm talking <laughs> to them about Jesus and not being the person who's trying to buy his soap. oh oops sorry guys well I love um, that too because it's a good segue into what you had mentioned to me earlier was that you know Paul used tent making as a front for his missionary work too, right? So mm -hmm. how do you, like, how would you encourage someone here who may have entrepreneurial aspirations or has a business already? Like, what kind of, what kind of wisdom would you give to somebody who's like thinking of something or has something already in process of how to use that as a, as a tool? Um. I mean, I think you just have to have your aim set right. Like we have to be pointed toward the North Star. Um, and if we are like, I'm kind of getting into like, I, I, um, I'm i kind of gonna be teaching on this on Thursday. So I feel like I don't know how much to say or not say, but um, but my my mission statement has always been the greatest commandment. And so, um, and that affects everything about the way that I run my business because that's my purpose in running it is not to make money. It's not to, um, to make it. I do like making people's lives better with good soap, but, um, but the, the real like crux of it is 
that my mission and our mission as Christians is to love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength and to love our neighbor as ourselves. And I think that we as writers have such a, a beautiful opportunity to use words to do that. Um, mm -hmm. And even in fiction writing, because I know for me, like sometimes what I need is a respite from like, not to like escape in a, in a toxic sense where I'm just like, looking at my phone, watching YouTube videos, they don't matter. But in like a real like soul rest, like my, um, my son uh, got married um, in, we have family spread all over the country. So our whole family was coming from all four corners of the country. Um, and I, somebody gave us a cow that had a broken hip that needed butchered right then. And the, all the butcher shops were backed up. Uh, like the month before he got married and I went to California for a week to see my mom and stepdad and I um and our kitchen was under a remodel and my husband was the one not like hiring it out like my husband was doing it he poured concrete countertops and didn't uh, sand them until the very last second so I couldn't even clean my house until like three days before everybody showed up from around the country um which is an insane month right and I'm trying to run this business at the same time um so during that month, do you know what I did for rest? Um, I read the entire Harry Potter series because she's a really good writer and it was really nourishing to me. Like I didn't, I didn't sleep very much. I just, I read a novel, like six novels, um, very thick ones. And, um, and so anyways, sometimes I think even fiction writers are offering a service. Like we don't see it or think about it and um and there's also like other like i think about this book called momo which is probably my favorite um juvenile fiction book out there and it's such a purposeful book like it's written so well and it makes you want to be a better person from reading it it's written by michael endy by the way who's the guy who wrote the never ending story um but anyways like i think even fiction writers i'm not i would don't discount yourself if that's your category or genre um because we all have such a beautiful a beautiful opportunity to um to leave words that really bless and encourage and and um aid the kingdom and help people and um even if it's just giving them a good um time of rest when they're in the middle of butchering a cow and <laughs> and remodeling the kitchen and preparing for a wedding you know oh anyways. my gosh that's a perfect storm for sure and they always it always convenes like over a big event, like oh. a wedding or something like that. Right. So, nuts. so space, how have you figured, I mean, you've, you're a self-professed ADD person who struggles to manage things. But like I said, I think you have obviously done that better than you think you have. How do you, how have you managed to do all the things like homeschool your kids and write this book over the last seven years of your life and run a business how have you how have you figured that out or have you <laughs> by adding one ball at a time to the juggling hmm. you know like i don't um i've been very very intentional at um at recognizing uh my own strengths and weaknesses and being honest about them and not trying to do more than I could um, because uh, because it was more important that I was able to do it well um, than quickly. That's that's really good. Like one thing at a time, right? Like we don't have to, you know, throw up five or seven different balls at the same time that just keep adding one one thing at a time prayerfully yeah. probably as well. Yeah, very prayerfully. And also, um, when I started writing, I stopped, uh, for the most part, taking on new soap accounts. Like, um, I mean, not entirely. And then at one point, I started praying and asking God to give me an employee because I was like, I can't keep doing this. Like, I'm going to retire if I don't have help. And the Lord gave me um, a very, a couple of very dear friends. One of them is like somebody that, um, that I, she can do pretty much she thinks like me and um and we dance together really well and she um like I'm about to go out of town for a couple of weeks and so I just sent her with a couple tubs of soap and she's gonna take care of the online orders for me and um and she comes and makes soap like she was at my house last Wednesday making soap with me and um 
and so I'm very thankful and um, because just knowing like what I can and can't handle and I was at a point where I was like Lord I can't handle um I can't sustain like this unless you give me the right person and he yeah was super great so has your business freed you up to do some things like you said you're about to do some travel and you have somebody helping you yeah. so sometimes it helps us if we're kind of sitting on the fence about business in general like to think about to think beyond like the pain of getting started and and all of the work that's involved with that but to look beyond that and be like well i'm doing it to free up some more time you know like the only two things that like commodities we really have our time and money right and so generally that's what we're working towards is we want to free we want more money to free up more time um or we need more time to make more money so has your has your business given you either or both of those and given you more freedom in your maybe yeah. creative pursuits yeah absolutely um i mean i uh have been able to use the soap money to fund a lot of different like writing endeavors and writing um like uh that like i in last october ended up going to uh, a intimate workshop with donald miller and ali fallon and it was like a really pretty pricey thing that i um, would not have been able to do if i didn't have this business um that was putting money into our family's budget um, and it's really cool because like I said, I've got a couple friends that are helping me now. So at this point it's, it's benefiting three different families, um, financially. And it does, um, when I take road trips, I have this giant sticker on the back of my car and I give away a lot of soap on the road or I'll bring it and like, maybe try to get it into a store or something. And so it's a tax write-off too, which is really cool. Just saying. Nice. Tax yeah. write-offs are amazing. <laughs> I can attest so, to that, you guys. Um, um, Space and I went yeah. to a conference together a couple of years ago, and she just had soap in her bag, and she would just give people soap. It was it was really sweet, and everyone was always. And then she gave me a bunch of too. And and if you haven't checked out her website, it's <laughs> is it spacecadetsoaps.com? dot com? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you yeah. should check out yeah. her, her website and. She's got a lot of really wonderful fragrances and and soap. So that's that's really fun. And it's really fun um, because it really like you can make somebody so much happier than um, than it actually merits. Right. So like it doesn't cost me a ton of money to make a bar of soap and to give it away but the like joy factor and the people that are receiving it like i remember um just recently i was at a craft fair and i gave somebody a bar of soap and i just knew like the lord just put it on my heart give that person a bar and i did and i and i kind of just had a feeling that it was very like specific like this person i mean i feel compelled to give soap away regularly but this one i just thought she really needs this encouragement and she almost started crying and she told me that somebody like I think her brother or somebody had just died in like the day before. And it just meant so much to her, this like bar of soap that to me was, you know, not a lot of sacrifice. But to her, it was like somebody noticing her and caring about her. And it was like a hug from the Lord um, to her. So so it's fun to have a product and I, um, and I think that we do the same thing with our stories, right? Where like, where we're sharing a part of our soul when we're sharing our stories with people and to us, we're just putting words on a page and we're, um, we're doing what the Lord has called us to do. And, um, to some degree of vulnerability, we're sharing part of ourself with somebody else, but that somebody else, it could be life-changing. Like it could be like that person was suicidal and they just knew, um, from reading a couple words that you wrote that they weren't alone and it brought them mm -hmm. past the precipice, you know? And so it's like, we don't, we don't really have the power over how our art transforms people's lives. We just get to create it. Like we're, this is what we've been given to do. So this is what God um, has purposed us for. And, uh, and we may never know the side of each, other, but, um, but at some point, it, you know, I, it, I love it that really you said that. I, I hope that, that you all 
we all take that to heart that like the words that you have is like, it's like your art form, it's your gift, right? And and mm -hmm. the same way, maybe it's not a physical, tangible gift, but that is a gift that you give to someone else and God and God gets to choose how it's received and how he uses it. And, and maybe we'll find out in heaven someday uh, what those gifts meant to other people. Um, I want to give everyone who's on this call an opportunity to ask questions. I'm curious to know, like, who here has got some sort of business or idea or anything like that? I'd love for us to be able to just kind of bounce ideas or share whatever God wants you to share. But before we do that, um, Space, can you give us an, an overview of what you're going to talk about on Thursday? Um, uh, well, a lot of it is about how, um, like I said, my mission statement is the greatest commandment and, um, and about how that has affected and played out in my business, like, um, and what we as writers, like what I personally have learned from, um, from running this business and, and living that mission statement out in the venue of soap making and soap slinging, um, but really like how it how it affects my the way that I view my writing life um because I think that if it wasn't for this business I would have the conventional wisdom like I've I've never I had a friend tell me who was working at a natural food store and was like the person that would order my soap she told me you should teach a business class and my first thought was that is ridiculous because I do everything the opposite of what people tell me I'm supposed to do. <laughs> like this is not like I am not like the classic conventional wisdom business model, but that has helped me so much in in my writing life because there's so much like feedback of like you have to have all these email subscribers, you have to do all of these things, and we can get our eyes off of the real goal, which is to honor Christ. Mm -hmm. And so we end up getting like so sidetracked by by all of the things that conventional wisdom teach us. Um, and really God just wants us to walk with him faithfully and to, and to let that play out. And uh, as he, as he um, has created us for this good work that, that we would um, walk with him in it, you know? So. Well, it kind of that boils it down, right? Like when you say your mission statement is the great commandment, like, yeah, that, that that sums it up, right? Like love God and love others. And that could be through soap making or or writing or whatever yeah. that whatever you know means God has yeah. given you. And, oops, sorry, Kara. Oh, oh, go for it. Yeah. And it's love your neighbor as yourself too, to where it's like we do have to um to tend to our own souls in the process of writing. Like if our if our um, objective is just to produce something, then a lot of times we get lost in the midst of it. And um, and like if I would have um, had my goal be, I want to start this business so I can make a lot of money so that my family is better off. Because we were really poor when we started. We were living a family of five off one labor worker's income. And it was a labor worker who also had insomnia who was self-employed. So his hours were a lot smaller probably than they would have been if he would have um, like not had such a hard time uh, getting to sleep at night. And, um, and so he would like sleep in and start his days later in the day. And we were, you know, just like a pretty impoverished like family. Um, and so it would have been easy for me to start off like wishing for a better life. Um, financially and and i think that because um because really it was just i saw what the lord was doing and saw like oh he wants me to keep creating this thing um then it made it so that i didn't lose myself in the process mm -hmm. too i didn't lose um like uh, does that make sense i mean like well i think i think i have a similar story in that I started my business to help our family who was struggling um, financially too. And at first my, my objective was I need to make money to help my family. Like that was, that was the driving factor. Right. But over the course of that, like God opened up my eyes to be like, no, this isn't just 
about making money. Like this is about serving people. And also it's, it's really satisfying as a woman to like, especially when you're home with children or, or, you know, you're, you're more confined to your four walls for whatever reason to have something that's your own, you know, and maybe, maybe you experienced that too in those years when you were feeling very impoverished that when you had, when God gave you this soap business, he was giving you something that like, in addition to your children and homeschooling for you to manage, that was yours. And, and that feels kind of good. Like it, it gives you a little bit more, um, not that children aren't already a wonderful purpose to have, but it kind of gives you another focus and another way of blessing your family. And it blesses us in the process, I think. Yeah. Oh, I still have the first rug that I bought or the first thing. It was a rug, like an Oriental, not like a real Oriental, but like Oriental, like um, decorated kind of looking rug. That was the first thing that I ever bought was soap money that wasn't soap oils. And I just felt like such a big deal, like buying that for my husband for Christmas. He doesn't yeah. love it as much as I do. It's kind of like, yeah, it's just but it was like a symbol here, right? right? Like, They're not that rug. <laughs> Yeah, like, this is really yeah. special to me. That's so. sweet. That's really sweet. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't want to overlook. Uh, you, there are a few comments. Carrie, I know, has loved your soaps in the past. And she said she gave them to the women at her retreat and they loved it. So just another little plug for Space Thank Cadet you. Soaps. Um, yeah. So ladies, feel free to unmute. Um I'd love to hear from you, like what the whole idea of this this week was talking about unconventional wisdom. Like, I think space is like the perfect person for that um, and how God has blessed her business and her writing because she's not like followed conventional wisdom. Sometimes God gets more glory. But um, do you all have questions or thoughts or any businessy related things you want to share? I'll share something fun um, as like if while you guys are thinking, um, because this I thought was really cool that um, we were leaving home. So we're on one running vehicle at the moment. Um, And so my husband dropped me off here. And right before we left home, um, I got a phone call and uh, and it was just somebody who had ordered a jar of salve online. And when the post office dropped it off, the lid got broken. And they called and I said, oh yeah, I'll just, I'll stick one in the mail. I'm headed to the post office right now. No problem. What's your address? You know? And, um, and I hung up the phone and my husband goes, and that's how you get repeat customers. And I was like, that's really funny. Do you know what I'm teaching on? And he was like, no, <laughs> like, like it's really appropriate. Like, cause it was just a simple, like, you know, way to use something that I had to bless somebody else without, um, making it a big deal. And I, yeah. and I was just and without like charging them for the replacement lid or whatever, like, and, um, and I just think that so often, um, we, uh, we try to hoard what we have. And, um, and I think that that has been one of the greatest, like lessons for me in this business is that God has given this to me to hold it with an open hand mm-hmm. and um and that it is really just to to be a blessing mm-hmm. like not um not to to acquire um what I think I need but to trust the Lord that he's going to meet my needs and that I just get to um to try to like simply um enhance the lives of other people and um anyways I just thought that was kind of funny timing to be walking out the door and then to have my husband like overhear that conversation and say that. Cause I was like, I wasn't trying to get repeat customers. I was just yeah, trying just to make sure that they had, to... didn't have a busted label. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, it's sometimes really simple. Um, what, what do you feel like have yeah. been the greatest challenges in terms of business and like, have you ever really I know you said earlier that you you needed help so badly that you were you were ready to to throw in the towel. So um, that is that that's a hard thing, and sometimes it's hard to know like when is the right time 
to do that Mm -hmm. because not always is it like, oh, I'm flush with money. So therefore I'm going to hire help. Right. So do you feel like, Mm -hmm. um, like that's been one of your greatest struggles or trusting the Lord to provide or what, where do you feel like that, that lands for you? Um, just remembering, I mean, I think I, I realized that sanity matters a lot more than money. Um, and so just making sure that I keep myself sane in the process. Um, and sometimes that means, um, like, you know, making bigger decisions, like somebody asked me if I can sell my soap in their store and saying no, you know, um, but sometimes that just means not, um, not like realizing when I'm getting snappier with my husband, like if I'm like at home and I'm like yesterday, I was pretty overwhelmed. And part of it is just perimenopause, which is a real beast, you know, um, and so I don't know if you guys have had the pleasure of meeting my friend Perry, but she's a <laughs> cuss word. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> <a witch. laughs> she's a she's a real pill. So yeah, we don't love so it, Perry all the time. Yeah. yeah. I'm like uh, all your hormones deplete, your body starts falling apart and you get moody. But um, but anyways, so I, I think that there's a measure of like in different seasons of life. Um, maybe this season it's perimenopause that makes it harder, but, um, but in other seasons, it's like, it's making sure that I'm still present for my kids when they were growing up and I was still able to homeschool them and just being able to, to make decisions based on sanity rather than on opportunity, um, Mm -hmm. has been, uh, that that gets hard sometimes, right? Like when you're like turning down business or, things like that. That's hard. And you said earlier, like learning to say no, like sometimes you're saying no to good things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's okay. Because, you know, when we, when we say no to, to the things that God doesn't want us to, then there's more space for the things that he does want us to. For sure. I loved how you, I had another, I was going to say, I love how you called your business a front. Um, for yeah. sharing the gospel. My husband and I drive around and anytime we see a business, it's clearly open, but never has anybody. We're like, that's a front, you know, like <laughs> it's, it's a running gag in our marriage. Of, um, and, and so I started thinking about that as you were talking and like, I struggle with creating a product that is easily accessible for the public, you know, like what I want to create and what would get the door open are always the same thing. And so, yeah, I think even within writing, you you talked about how Harry Potter was this comfort to you and how stories can be a comfort in that time. And it's true for me, too. Like, there's so many books that I've read that have just been there for me when I couldn't be there for myself. And um, I I think that that's something I'm going to have to explore because there's definitely market out there for that type of writing if I'm willing to make it my front. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think it's more about what we were created to write than it is what the market is there for. Um, Because God will open the doors for whatever it is. Like you think about the impossible things that he did for Israel and like judges and Kings and Chronicles. And it was really because they had faith you know, and it wasn't, um, it wasn't because the Red Sea was a dry pathway. It wasn't because um, Jericho's walls were made to topple like a Jenga set, you know, like there were these things that were just like absolutely um, counter to everything natural. And, um, and yet, um, and yet Moses had the faith to point his staff at the Red Sea and, and watch it split. And Joshua had the faith to march Israel around Jericho for a week straight. And, um, and Israel had the faith to, um, to walk in silence and then blow their trumpets and scream. And, um, and I think that so often, like what God is requiring us is that we would listen to his sweet, still small voice and that we would walk in obedience to that thing. And even if it doesn't, produce the results that we would like it to you know like even if uh, like I think that um like so I've been writing this book for the last seven and a half years and I really I think if I don't put 
put the effort in to get it published, that will be my failure, not because I'm not supposed to. Um, I feel strongly that this book would be a blessing to a lot of people. And I don't think that I'm saying that from a place, like I think the seven and a half years have been super good for refining my soul because I think my motives were a lot different seven and a half years ago than they are today. Um, but, um, but I do think that like, that I have to be content with 10 people reading it versus 10,000 or a hundred thousand people reading it. Um, that no matter what, like those 10 people, it could be the thing that saves their lives. And those 10 people could be the next uh, greatest missionaries that this world has ever seen. And they got saved because they read something that I wrote, you know, or I, like, it's like, we, we really just, I think, have to trust the Lord with whatever the outcome is. And I know that that's unconventional. Like I'm, I'm a business owner that didn't start with this idea that I was going to have this thriving business. And it's not a huge business. I mean, I sell in like about 20 different stores and online and at craft fairs and stuff, but it pays the bills for sure. Um, and it's, and it's a huge blessing, but, um, but it's just because this is what God, um, made me to do. And so I feel like I'm rambling. I'm sorry, guys, I shouldn't have drank that second cup of coffee. I think <laughs> so, I I guess like I'm to supposed to ramble. To... <laughs> What'd um, you say? I just, I, I like your rambling. And if I could just ask, no. I am so drawn to your gentle spirit and your mm -hmm. um, call to uh, all of us to walk in faithfulness. And I'm just wondering if you could speak a little bit back to the beginning when you learned those practices of listening to God and walking gently with him, regardless of the outcome. What Were there things that you practices that you had or things that you did to help cultivate the heart that you have? Good question, oh, Karen. Thank you. Um, I think different seasons of life have taught me different types of those lessons. Um, so I used to hitchhike the country. Um, and I know that's funny, isn't it? I say that kind of nonchalantly, but 26 years ago, I picked my husband up hitchhiking and we hitchhiked for a year. And I think that we really both had to learn right away to listen. Like we got saved a week and a half after we met. Um, but I think both of us really had to learn to listen intently um, for God's leading. And like, you know, um, because we could have ended up in a bad hitchhiking ride if we hadn't. Um, and then I remember as a young Christian overthinking everything and the Lord just uh, leading me to the passage where it says that um, God is not a God of confusion, but of peace and realizing like, if he's filling me with peace, that's probably the decision I need to make, like not to overthink it and to go um, like if, because when I overthink things, I tend to confuse myself and get really overwhelmed and anxious. Um, and so I think those two seasons of life were helpful for that. But then also um, I went through a really, really severe um year of extreme spiritual warfare and depression and uh just internal like like it was um it felt like a year where god was very silent um and it was excruciatingly hard and um uh, and i was suicidal and my life started falling apart at the seams and um my marriage like all but collapsed and it was just brutal like it was 2015 and so it wasn't super long ago it was actually right before i started writing this book and um and i think that season was extremely good for me um because it taught me like i went into it a hopeless extrovert that did not know how to be alone with god and i came out of it um loving solitude because i had felt so alone and then i found um, that when God did make himself seem real to me again, that he was closer than he'd ever been, or at least felt closer than he'd ever been. And, um, and I think also through that season, um, one of the things that I was really convicted about was that I, um, I had learned early on, um, to not make it the Bible into a legalistic thing, um, where it was like, I was really, I would beat myself up if I didn't get up and read the Bible first thing in the morning. But I was raising three little boys that were super exhausting. Um, 
and like hell bent on ending up in the morgue or the ER by the end of every day. And so it was like all day long, I was like running frantically trying to like keep them alive and safe. And, um, and so God gave me hunger to get into his word, but it was like stuffing it in small pockets of the day. And I think that, um, that seeing his, like I had this experience um, where when my kid was a teenager, I was telling somebody the story of what it was like to try to get into the word when they were little. And Forrest was like, yeah, I remember that. I would always look up from breakfast wanting seconds. And I always knew that I would find you in your room kneeling over the Bible. And it was like such a big deal to him because mm -hmm. food was his like most precious thing and so to see his mom sacrificing breakfast to read the bible was like a really life-changing thing and i realized that the thing that i had felt guilty about which was not getting up an hour early and doing the whole like sacred morning time was actually something that god was using to teach my kids um about the sacredness and preciousness of his word but i realized during that year that i also had used that to justify not making it a top priority in my life that like that that like I needed to have that be the first fruits of my day. Mm -hmm. And so I think that um, that I I've like learned in the latter part of my life um, that that needs to be the thing that comes first. And I think that's really helped me in my writing life because it's pushed my soap life back. So it's like, I can do like, I mean, I still have a lot of deliveries to make and I still have soap to make and all this, but I don't start my soap making day until I've spent the first, like the morning hours um, in the word. And so that I think is really um, like God's mercy to me and, and probably the reason why I'm able to do both, because I don't think that I would be living a sustainable lifestyle if he wasn't. Um, compelling me to make that the thing that comes before all the other things that that have to take place you know mm. thank you that was really a helpful thanks. response yeah thank yeah. you for the encouragement sometimes i just feel like a spaz so gentle spirit is not especially in this whole you know perimenopausal season is not the thing where i'm like oh yeah i'm so <laughs> sweet and gentle spirit i'm like i'm sorry i'm a psychopath <laughs> like, i promise smiles this will be over soon i hope <laughs> This is oh. this is the season where you uh where you just have to apologize a lot more, and that's probably also good for the soul. I just hate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you have a shift coming up, space. I want to honor your oh, time you. and thank you for sharing. And I agree. I think you do have a sweet. A, a gentle and quiet spirit and yes. a very um in the words of our friend abigail meekness right i think there's a meekness to you um god has has uh broken you in many ways for his purposes and so i think that that comes through for sure and your Thank your you. ministry of soap um is a, is a ministry of god of meeting people where they're at so what a sweet, sweet time together. Thank you, Space. Um, one quick announcement for anyone on this call. We're going to move um, Thursday's meeting back one hour to accommodate Space. She's doing a little bit of travel. Thank you for listening to the Writer's Block podcast. We hope you've been encouraged in both the art and heart of writing. Did you know there's a Writer's Block community where we share even more teaching, encouragement, and support with one another? You can learn more at mywritersblock.com. If you have a friend who wants to grow in confidence and clarity in her writing, would you please take a minute to share this episode with her? And then would you take one more second and hit subscribe or follow on whatever platform you're listening to? Thanks for joining your neighbors on the block today. We'll see you next week as we grow in the art and heart of writing together.